Why would I risk making this video? I've been dreading this for weeks. As a carnivore and a physician dedicated to helping people achieve metabolic health, this is not an easy conversation for me to have. There's a risk when you put your thoughts out there. What if someone misinterprets this as permission to ignore the principles of metabolic health? But this video isn't about me or my fears, it's about you. It's about the reality of sugar alternatives, the good, the bad and the uncertain future they might bring. So let's dive in. I'm doing this because you deserve honesty and clarity, not dogma. So why was I afraid to make this video? Number one, I'm a carnivore and I've learned sugar alternatives don't often agree with me. Let's face it, plant-based sweeteners are not exactly in the carnivore rule book. And trust me, I felt the consequences of trying them. Digestive discomfort, cravings, you name it. But here's the thing, not everything that doesn't work for me is necessarily bad for you. Number two, what if new studies expose unforeseen risk? We've seen it happen before. Something once believed to be safe gets reevaluated. Saccharin, anyone? What if five years from now, research ties these sweeteners to some obscure medical condition? That's a risk I wrestle with every day as a doctor advocating for your health. Number three, I'm breaking the carnivore rules by even talking about this. Strict carnivores, close your eyes. This video is not for those who seek absolute purity. It's for people striving for metabolic health who may need occasional flexibility and guidance. And let's be real, most of you watching this aren't eating ribeyes all day, every day. So let's talk about why I needed to make this video. Reason number one, periodic indulgence is okay. Let's acknowledge a simple truth. Most people aren't robots. If you don't have a processed food addiction and can easily get back on track after a treat, there may be no harm in enjoying a little sweetness. It's about sustainability, not suffering. Reason number two, Flexibility motivates some people. Some of my patients thrive when they feel they have choices. I've seen it over and over again. Allowing a touch of sweetness can mean a difference between sticking with a metabolic health plan and throwing in the towel. Reason number three, the goal is metabolic health, not carnivore perfection. Let's reframe the discussion. Metabolic health doesn't require perfection. It requires consistency, intentionality, and results. If a little monk fruit or stevia gets you there, so be it. Not all sweeteners are created equal and these three deserve a spotlight for a reason. Let's dig into what makes them stand out. Number one, stevia. Stevia comes from the leaves of the stevia ribadiana plant and it's about 200 to 300 times sweeter than sugar. It's magic. Stevia interacts with receptors in your mouth but doesn't spike blood sugars because it bypasses carbohydrate metabolism altogether. Here's a lesser known fact. Some research suggests stevia may improve insulin sensitivity by interacting with your gut microbiome. Now, how cool is that? Number two, monk fruit. Monk fruit contains mucosides, which gives it its sweet flavor without impacting blood sugar. It's an antioxidant powerhouse, which makes it not only sweet, but also slightly protective for your cells. Here's another lesser known fact. Monk fruit extract has been used in traditional Chinese medicine for centuries to cool heat related illnesses. So if you're feeling inflamed, it might be your sweetener of choice. Number three, allulose. Allulose is a rare sugar found in figs, raisins, and jackfruit. What's fascinating is that your body doesn't metabolize it the way it does glucose or fructose. It passes through you, leaving your blood sugar levels nearly untouched. Here's another lesser known fact. Allulose has been shown to reduce fat storage in animal studies. Now, don't quote me on a human fat loss miracle, but it's promising. So why are these sweeteners better choices? Number one, minimum glycemic effect. This is the most important reason to consider these sweeteners. Unlike sugar, which spikes your glucose and insulin levels, stevia and monk fruit leave your blood sugar levels practically untouched. Mechanistically, this means less inflammation, less oxidative stress, and a smaller burden on your pancreas. Number two, and this one hits home, gut-friendly alternatives. Sugar alcohols like urethritol and xylitol can wreak havoc on people with IBS or other gut sensitivities. They're poorly absorbed, leading to gas, bloating, and let's just say embarrassing moments. Monk fruit, stevia, and allulose avoid these pitfalls. Number three, no nasty chemicals. 
Unlike aspartame or sucralose, these alternatives are free of chemical aftertaste and scary headlines about neurotoxicity or cancer risk. Stevia and monk fruit are derived from natural plants and allulose occurs naturally in foods. But to be fair, let's keep this conversation balanced. Even these sweeteners aren't perfect. Overuse can still lead to cravings for sweeter foods. And we don't yet have decades of data on allulose. If you're using them, do so sparingly and mindfully. At the end of the day, this video isn't just about sweeteners. It's about making informed choices for your metabolic health. Perfection is a myth, it's all about progress. So do I regret making this video? No, I believe in empowering you with knowledge so you can navigate your own journey. So tell me, what do you think? Did I make the right choice bringing this topic into the carnivore conversation? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you found this information helpful. Until next time, keep protecting your nest and reaching for true metabolic health.